Well, hello again from Kingston. The sun is shining, the wind is blowing a little bit, but a lot has taken place and I'll explain why there's a great deal more to come. If you enjoy these updates, please do consider subscribing, but thanks for watching anyway. The working week now begins with a night shift on Sunday evening, and that's where we'll start this week's update. Beginning at 5 o'clock in the evening and working through until 3 o'clock in the morning, the night shift performs tasks which are essentially quieter and complement the work of the day shift. They enjoy a different perspective, completely in the quiet of the night, but their work is making significant differences to the advancement of the project. The volume rises significantly during the day, and as work continued this week to clear up the approaches to the west end of the bridge, it was time for the city to remove some of the concrete blocks that now proved surplus to the task. This won't be the only time this week that you see the skilled operation of that excavator, which has been very busy. Sorting out the forms that are used to create the dividing wall between traffic and multi-use lanes has been another task this week. There was a steady effort too to build what appear to be the forms that will create, I think, a barrier wall over the green wall just off the west abutment. This looked well towards completion by Friday afternoon. At the other end of the bridge, work began to shape the embankment around the east abutment. And later in the week, as backfill began, a team would concentrate on producing the underlay and the installation of the green wall on the south side. Setting abutments aside, it's time now to turn our attention to the main bridge structure. Two major pours of concrete occurred this week on the steel span, with the first on Monday. Every pour that takes place is very much a team activity with those on the steel the operators of the ready-mix trucks and the concrete pumper operator all playing essential roles. It may appear an equipment intensive activity, but just look at the amount of individual effort involved, including hand finishing. On Tuesday, as portable toilets took to the air, a great deal of effort went into laying protective tarpaulins. Suspended over the fresh concrete, they contain heated air that promotes curing. Wednesday's concrete pour was not continuous from that of Monday and required a relocation of the Gamaco concrete layer. On Wednesday, as the excavator conducted some reshaping work, at the top of Gore Road, the pumper arrived for service again. But it's important before we go for a look to tidy up and make good. Wednesday's concrete pour saw the return of the same cast of characters. 
and everyone much enjoyed the same excellent weather conditions that they had on Monday. A long section of concrete was laid all the way from the west end of the steel span where it meets Pier 17, running eastward and covering almost half of the western half arch. You can see the results of Wednesday's pour from overhead running east to the red tarpaulin covered Monday pour. Thursday presented a completely different weather picture. But that didn't prevent the arrival of a mini excavator which would go on to serve Black and MacDonald. This occurred on the east side. Meanwhile on the west side a pair of vehicles arrived to remove Lucy Linkbelt, the wheeled crane, and her ballast weights to another location in somewhat less than ideal conditions. Soon it was time for Mikey Crane to bring Lucy to the transporter. With considerable care, she was eased forward onto the transporter, and before very long, the tractor had rejoined, and she was off up the road to whatever her new task may be. We will see her back in Kingston. Any report on the week would be incomplete without remembering that at the west end of the bridge, brackets are steadily being removed to leave a clean profile. While at the east end, they continue to be installed invariably after careful planning and preparation. In close coordination with project engineers, Black and MacDonald, working with Utilities Kingston, continue to inch towards commissioning of the traffic signals on Gore Road and Highway 15. But fresh excavations this week suggest that everything is not going entirely smoothly for them. On a happier note, we can approach wildlife with the news that Bar Construction, who will be leading the development of the West End, arrived this week. And on the east side, staff from Tomlinson, who did such a lot of work last year, returned to discuss what is required to complete that intersection. All just as encouraging as the seedlings we're seeing spring up around the site.
Thanks for making it all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed the fox. And if you enjoy these, please consider subscribing to the channel. And I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.